Welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hey everyone, welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrosch, and uh, if you're Joining us again, welcome back. If you're new to the podcast, well, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Kick off your shoes. Uh, stay a little bit. Why not? You've tuned in to episode 11. I can't believe this is going as quick as it is, but uh, I'm very happy. and We have quite a few more tales of honor to get through. So uh, without further ado, I'll let you know that this episode's being made possible by my good friends over at Sunrise Linens. They're a vintage vibe clothing company that uh, they offer quality handmade clothing right here in the U.S. Visit their store at etsy.com slash shop slash sunrise linens. And uh, look, while you're there, if you find some stuff that, you know, kind of fits your fancy, go ahead and add it to the cart. And in the little promo code section, go enter TOH25, all one, no spaces, for 25% off your order. And uh, be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram because they're uh, they're going to let you know when when new clothing uh, is released, any sort of changes or whatnot. Sunrise Linens for nostalgia and wandering. And now, a tale of honor. John W. Finn was born on the 24th of July, 1909, in Compton, California. He dropped out of school after the 7th grade and in July 1926, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy. He completed recruit training in San Diego, and after a brief stint with a ceremonial guard company, Finn attended general aviation utilities training at Naval Station Great Lakes. In April of 1927, he returned to San Diego and initially worked in aircraft repair before becoming an ordnance man and working on anti-aircraft guns. Finn served on a series of ships and was promoted to Chief Petty Officer, which was the highest enlisted rank at that time, in 1935 after only nine years of service. Finn was then stationed at Naval Air Station Kanuhe Bay on island of Oahu, Hawaii, by December of 1941. Now anyone who paid attention to history class already knows the significance of this month year, and location. Finn was in charge of 20 men with the primary task of maintaining the weapons of VP-11, a Catalina flying boat squadron. On the morning of the 7th, Finn was at home about a mile away from the aircraft hangars when he heard gunfire. As he drove to the hangar, he could see Japanese planes and saw that the airbase was under attack. He found that his men were already trying to fight back using weapons from either inside the burning planes or on improvised stands once detached. Finn took control of a 50 caliber machine gun and mounted it to a movable tripod platform used for gunnery training. He moved the platform into an open area where he had a clear view of the attacking aircrafts. For two hours, Finn fired at the Japanese planes until the attack had ended. During this time, he was wounded with 21 distinct wounds. He finally received medical treatment, and despite the wounds, Finn helped arm the remaining planes for another attack. These actions earned him the Medal of Honor, and his citation reads, For extraordinary heroism, distinguished service, and devotion above and beyond the call of duty. During the first attack by Japanese planes on the Naval Air Station Kanoe Bay on 7 December 1941, Lieutenant Finn promptly secured and manned a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on an instruction stand in a completely exposed section of the parking ramp, which was under heavy enemy machine gun strafing fire. Although painfully wounded many times, he continued to man this gun to return the enemy's fire vigorously and with telling effect throughout the enemy strafing and bombing attacks and with complete disregard for his own personal safety. It was only by specific orders that he was persuaded to leave his post 
and seek medical attention. Following first aid treatment, although obviously suffering much pain and moving with great difficulty, he returned to the squadron area and actively supervised the rearming of returning planes. His extraordinary heroism and conduct in this action were in keeping with the highest traditions of the U.S. Naval Service. In 1942, Finn was commissioned and served as a limited duty officer with the rank of ensign. He then was reverted back to his enlisted rank in 1947 and then eventually became a lieutenant with the bombing squadron VB-102. He retired from the Navy in September of 1956. He and his wife became foster parents of five children on their 90-acre ranch near Pine Valley, California, and Finn celebrated his 100th birthday with a crowd of over 2,000 people on the 24th of July, 2009. John W. Finn was the oldest living Medal of Honor recipient until his death on the 27th of May, 2010. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you very, very, very much, very much for listening to Tales of Honor podcast. And hey, I know you like this podcast, otherwise you wouldn't keep coming back to listen to it. So please be sure to leave a review for us, a nice rating, and uh, tell a friend. You can see more information on Facebook, Instagram, or over at uh, thebeardeddetailer.com slash TOH podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them over to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening.